so glad you joined us. I'm Julie Bumgardner, and this is Julie B TV. Welcome to this episode of The Relatable Table. I'm Julie B. Today we're going to talk about a topic that is probably pretty difficult for a lot of couples to even come close to discussing. We're going to talk about cheating. What is cheating? What do you do if you think your spouse might be cheating? So I'm going to start us out by just asking each of you, first I should introduce everybody, how about that? This is Mitchell. Anna and Chris. And I, I'd like to hear from each of you, what would be your definition of cheating in your marriage? So Chris, you wanna start us out? I can, yeah. Um, well, I think obviously most people think about uh, an affair mm -hmm. when thinking about cheating. But uh, I think a broader definition is very helpful to couples and that is it's, it's anything that you're acting in dishonesty with your spouse. And if I were to hide something from my wife that I know she would want to know, you know, I know that would be something that is, is something that has to be between the two of us and mm -hmm. not just me, then mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm cheating her on being open and honest with her. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Anna? I think cheating would be um, in a relationship if you have a third party come into your relationship maybe that's emotional or even if it starts as a friendship that bothers the other person that would be constituted as cheating mm -hmm. based you know yeah all right mm -hmm. Mitchell um, I would echo both of those so I think it definitely you know so often the easy thing to go to is an affair because it's just the most obvious but I think it goes anything that really breaks down trust in the relationship mm. Um, so when you start bringing other people into it, whether that's mm -hmm. just, you know, you can lead into emotional issues there. And, and if you just have this breakdown of trust where you're doing things in secrecy, if you're trying to hide things from your significant other, then you're really kind of walking a fine line there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it made me think when you, well, first of all, I think we should unpack a fair. But as you were talking about the whole trust piece, it just made me think about probably people don't think much about if, if you're doing your marriage work with somebody else, like mm -hmm. if you're talking about your marriage or how complicated it is with your mm -hmm. spouse with somebody else, that could really be defined as cheating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's unpack affair. How, how would you define that? Because I think a lot of people think affair, oh, they're sleeping together. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think there's a lot of sides to an affair, personally. I mean, there's obviously the physical side, you know, where you are sleeping with uh, someone other than your spouse, but, you know, you, you consider emotional affairs, um, where you're seeking something that, that you need emotionally that's normally from your spouse, your mm -hmm. husband or your mm -hmm. wife, but mm -hmm. you're gaining it from somebody else, mm -hmm. then that uh, definitely constitutes an affair as well. Yeah. Anybody want to add anything to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would. I think that's right on. I think it. I think so often, um, the the emotional side is is the side that you don't really. It can kind of unassumingly happen. I think sometimes you know you can um, because you're if you're sharing the intimacy, you should be sharing with your spouse mm -hmm. with someone else. You're you're walking into an affair. Yeah. And I think more yeah. often than not, it may happen on the emotional side, and and eventually that can lead to the physical. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people, you know, just like you were talking about, if you're doing your marriage work with someone else, if you're having problems at home and you're always talking to a coworker about it, you're always talking to some friend about it, mm -hmm. um, and when it's a friend or a coworker of the opposite sex, then you're, you're kind of, you're, you're stepping out of what you should be doing mm -hmm. because you're not going to your significant other first. Mm -hmm. And so that emotional affair, I think, can be a big piece of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember when the whole Ashley Madison thing mm. came out and, and all of these people were impacted by that. Cheating is pretty prevalent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Seems like it's pretty prevalent. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? What do you think leads people to go outside their marriage and 
really, I mean, they're trying to get their needs met mm -hmm. in some way, mm -hmm. shape, or form. Some of them, others, the sense of adventure. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think is happening there, though? I think there's also there's fear um, in having your spouse know you many mm. times, mm. and so it's safer to go to someone else. Um, so that may be a factor. I don't know. Um, yeah. I think yeah. you're definitely onto something mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And Mitchell said a word earlier, the word intimacy. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you define intimacy as something like you're being vulnerable and open and showing parts of yourself to someone who should be reserved as your spouse, but those needs aren't being met within your marriage, mm -hmm. you're gonna go seeking intimacy elsewhere. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we, somewhere along the line, you know, it, it seems like that we've lost this ability to fulfill those intimate needs between husband and wife. Mm -hmm. And so you're gonna go and find that elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Do you think that unspoken expectations plays a role in all of this? I mean, I'm just sitting here listening yeah. and thinking mm -hmm. how often, whether it's intimacy or uh, money or job, mm -hmm. just how often we're thinking in our minds, well, it ought to be this way or they ought to be doing this for me and that's mm -hmm. not happening. I definitely think it can play a big part in it and mm -hmm. just not being, and it could be like Anna said, you know, mm -hmm. if, if there's that fear of I don't wanna, I don't know if I want to open myself up that much or, or what will they think, but I think if you don't have those conversations about the expectations, mm -hmm. then it could be a lot more prone to think, well, you know, my spouse isn't meeting these expectations mm -hmm. and, you know, I spend a lot of time with this other person and, and I'm going to, you know, talk to them about some of those things I should be talking to my spouse about. It feels more comfortable, maybe, or it could feel easier to go talk mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. than putting the effort in to kind of breaking down those barriers in your relationship, where if you both have unspoken expectations and you're just like, I don't want to put in the work there, mm -hmm. this could be a little bit easier to just talk to this other person who's just so open and willing to listen, mm -hmm. um, that it could definitely get you into some trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might think that, uh, yeah, that they're not going to respond like your spouse might exactly. respond if you tell them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Chris, you were about to say something. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm thinking there's all kinds of little things that's that's in that, you know? I mean, if, if I go to my wife and um, let's just say money, I mean, money's a hard thing to talk about mm -hmm. sometimes. Yep. And, you know, I go to her to talk about how we spend our money or how we shouldn't spend our money or so on. That could potentially be a really awkward, uncomfortable, even conflictual kind of a conversation, mm -hmm. right? So I might be more prone to keep some of those things from her. And at the same time, like what you're saying, Mitchell, I mean, if there's somebody at work or somewhere else who, you know, they're, they're friendlier when I talk to them about these things, <laughs> mm -hmm. they, they accept those, oh yeah, you know, you can spend money however you want to, it's your money, you earn it, whatever, you know, then I'm going to side more over there because it's easier mm -hmm. and they seem to be more loving toward me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we've all known people who have cheated. Mm -hmm. Talk for a minute about the fallout from that. What have you witnessed in terms of friends and acquaintances that you've seen that have found themselves in this position where, where they've cheated and their spouse has found out? Yeah, I mean, that can, it can be huge. So I think, you know, it, it obviously friends, family, becomes a big piece of it because you you know you've got to when when family finds out it's it's how do you navigate that through those relationships with family does that break down relationships mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but then obviously friendships if if a lot of friendships can be broken because you know if they're friends with both spouses mm -hmm. and if if the cheating is an end to the relationship so I think that's where you know sometimes it can make a difference you know there's two ways you can go from it. Either the relationship will survive it mm -hmm. or the relationship doesn't and that's the end. And I think when, you know, when that especially can be the end, you're going to have a lot of broken friendships because mm -hmm. your friends are going to start making choices for who are they going to side with? Yeah. Who, who are the, where are they going to go? Um, and even if it survives the affair, that still can, it can harm the friendships because the friends, you know, 
have been there through it and so them it can change their perception of you going forward mm -hmm. it can change you know how they feel about the two of you um, and so it can definitely have I think large ripple effects mm -hmm. on, on how it can go. Mm -hmm. Anna you have any thoughts on that? Yes I feel like you, even as a friend you would be hurt just because then you feel like do I really know this person he hid that from me as well so that there's going to be um, broken relationship just as a friendship as well as the broken relationship with the spouse so it just there there is definitely a ripple effect throughout just the family the friends community um, and that's very hard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if people think much about when they're walking down the road mm -hmm. you know we know lots of research that usually when people are unfaithful in any way, shape, or form, it usually starts out very innocent. Mm -hmm. And then they'll often say, I, I don't know how I landed here. I just landed here. Mm -hmm. But I wonder what is happening for people. They're walking this road, and they know they're treading on thin ice. Mm -hmm. uh, but they keep on walking. Do you think they think about the ripple? I, I don't necessarily think so. I mean, I, I think people might tend to believe that that thin ice stays about as thin as it's going to be, and so they're still walking on it. Uh huh. You know, I, I kind of I was thinking about this earlier. I, I think it reminds me of when I was a kid and and we would sled in the snow. And you, you start off on the top of the hill and you kind of go slow and it's not real dangerous, you know, <laughs> but all of a sudden you're very Take much picking off. up speed and you're going downhill before you know it. Mm -hmm. I think that is how that works sometimes. You know, I've had several friends and Kristen and I both have had several friends that have experienced that. Mm -hmm. And they've been on both sides mm -hmm. where the relationship's been resolved or, or it wasn't. And uh, in, in most of those situations, it just seems that way. They were what was seemingly innocent, not too harmful, as long as it's just a little secret, it's okay, and mm -hmm. nobody's really hurt, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, it just, it goes downhill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The three of you are married. Mm -hmm. Have you all ever had a conversation with your spouse about what would define cheating for you in your relationship? I don't know that we've ever had a conversation to that specific to say this defines cheating. I think we've had conversations about boundaries okay. and what mm -hmm. does, you know, what are boundaries when it comes to relationships with, um, you know, friendships, relationships with people of the opposite sex. Like we've had discussions about those, but I don't know that we've ever had the conversation where it was actually like, hey, what do you define cheating mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. like to, to do it in those words. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've talked a lot about boundaries, a lot about openness, a lot about not hiding things mm -hmm. and about secrecy. Yeah. So I think a lot of conversations around it without actually saying like, hey, mm -hmm. what's cheating to you? What do you think <laughs> that is? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, same with us. We really never talked about what is cheating for us. Um, I think we focus more on what are my needs, what are his needs, how can mm -hmm. I meet his needs, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So if we're focusing on that, then we're not focusing on the things that he cannot do, mm -hmm. but what can we do for our relationship. Mm -hmm. So, And that's an interesting mm -hmm. point because <coughs> there's a lot of pushback from people sometimes, well, what do you mean I, I can't do this and I can't do that? Mm -hmm. Even though the whole point is to protect the marriage relationship. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, well, just to kind of echo uh, uh, you both, we've, you said the word boundaries. We've, mm -hmm. we've talked a lot about boundaries. Um, and, and not just what is, what are we gonna be open about things like money and time and who we're hanging out with and, and the relationships that we have that are particularly like opposite sex relationships, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how we share about those things. But what are the non-negotiables, mm -hmm. you know, like porn? Porn is a non-negotiable, you know, that that's, has no place in the relationship. 
um, going out one on one on a social, uh, purely a social context with the opposite sex mm -hmm. of anybody is a non negotiable. That, that has no place. And it's because it's not to limit, but it's to protect, mm -hmm. you know, the sacred relationship, this thing that we have. Yeah. I think so many people struggle with that. I, I can remember, this has probably been more than a decade ago, but I was traveling for business and I ran into someone that had actually done some consulting work mm. for us a number of years ago. And uh, he was like, hey, do you want to just meet for dinner and we could just catch up? Mm. And I called Jay and I said, <laughs> Or would you be okay with this? And he goes, this just feels, it just, it just, I don't know, it feels awkward to me. Like you haven't seen him in a long mm -hmm. time. And yeah. I don't know, I think I just am uncomfortable with that. And I said, okay. But I think there's a lot of people that would be like, well now, wait a minute, you're a business person and mm -hmm. you had every mm -hmm. right to sit down and do that dinner with the person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think but, you got to ask the ultimate question, though, is what do you value more? Do you value um, being able to be free to do this or that or whatever, to sit down with this person you haven't seen in forever, or do you value more the feelings of the person that you love the most mm -hmm. and how they feel about that and the safety and the comfort that they feel? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a big question. Mm -hmm. that's a good don't point. you think people struggle with that, though? Definitely. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Totally. Because you, you don't want the other person to think, oh, he's... She, she, he, he's going to think something bad about me mm -hmm. if you know if I do go or not, and so you. That's when that question pops up. Okay, do I value my husband's feelings mm -hmm. um, more than I do what the other person thinks of me? Mm -hmm. And I think when it comes mm -hmm. down to it, if if we're I mean if we're all honest, it's 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 hard to always put someone before you all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when you get into some of those things that, you know, if you look into some of those things, whether it's emotional or physical, any mm -hmm. type of affair, any type of cheating, you're putting yourself in front of your spouse mm -hmm. because you're like, well, they're not meeting my needs. So instead of talking to them about not meeting my needs, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go over here because this person is meeting my needs mm -hmm. as innocently as it may begin or as intentional as you may be about it. Mm -hmm. um, because I think, you know, it's, it's, I think it's, it takes work and it takes focus to be like, I'm always going to put my wife's needs in front of mine. And to think about, just like mm -hmm. that situation with Jay, to think about, you know, how is this going to make them feel? Mm -hmm. Or how would I feel mm -hmm. if exactly. he how would I feel on the, calling me and on the other that. end, you know, where, <laughs> yeah. where I want to make sure that I'm thinking about them first. Uh -huh. And it's not easy, but I think it's something that you've got to just, take focus and say, I'm, I've committed to this. We're going to be, you know, we're going to have a healthy relationship. We're going to have a healthy mm -hmm. marriage. I'm going to put them first and I'm mm -hmm. going to focus on them. And what would they think? Mm -hmm. You know, something I've taken for granted in the past too is when that kind of question has arisen very few times and when my wife has said, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with this, mm -hmm. it, it's not necessarily her discomfort with it, but she can also see things from her angle <laughs> that I can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And her, her mm -hmm. you know, the red flags are going off in her mind going, this could be a possible danger zone or mm -hmm. I can see something in her eyes that that my husband doesn't see necessarily. Wives are really good about that. They're yeah. very good about <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> so uh, to, to not just respect their feelings, but to trust their feelings mm -hmm. is, is huge. But don't you think that that's also the thing that can really set things in motion for couples where, where it creates a lot of discord because it's like, oh, you don't trust me. If you trusted mm -hmm. me, you wouldn't care that I actually went and did that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. right, yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. definitely. I, I think it just comes back to that question. I mean, you know, what do you value more? <laughs> yeah. And oftentimes mm -hmm. it could not be a trust of, of Kristen towards you, it could be Kristen thinking, I don't trust her. Right, exactly. the, ulterior, the motive of yes. the other person. I don't yeah. trust uh -huh. her wanting to go out <laughs> exactly. and yes. grab a coffee or wanting to like have this like, it could be her thinking, no, 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 she's up to something. Because she sees mm -hmm. something. Like, as innocent as you are in it, yeah. and I completely trust you, I don't trust them. But mm -hmm. I think if you don't, if you don't ever verbalize that, mm -hmm. like if you don't verbalize it and say, hey, I trust you. I know you're not going to do anything, but mm -hmm. I really don't think they have mm -hmm. your best interest at heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it can yeah. it can go there. Yeah. And let's face it, we all have weaknesses too. And even if it's them that can't necessarily be trusted, and we're the ones who are kind of going into it real naively, mm -hmm. 
and that door is cracked open just a little bit, mm -hmm. I still will have that temptation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So that is not just protecting a relationship, but Kristen's protecting me mm -hmm. when yeah. she expresses those kinds of feelings. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the couples, you know, you just talked about, well, I feel like I'm not getting my needs met. So because you're not willing to meet my needs, I'm justified in doing what I'm doing. And you're <laughs> <laughs> laughing. Justifies a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. I think we like to justify ourselves yeah. a lot, yes. mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, Mitchell said something a little earlier that I think is just so important. You got to talk about it. You got to bring it up and have conversations about this. And if needs are not being met, don't just automatically assume I'm justified to go do something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sit down and talk about it and express your needs mm -hmm. yeah. and talk about how all that works. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really easy to focus on what we need instead of mm -hmm. what our spouse needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that can open a door like, well, I deserve to be happy. Mm -hmm. I deserve yeah. love. And these are all good things. But if we focus on our spouse, then mm -hmm. we can, we will stop focusing on ourselves yeah. too. And that is so hard a lot of times because Very. the culture mm -hmm. constantly speaks to you. It's all about you. Mm -hmm. You deserve to be happy. You should have all these things. And if you don't mm -hmm. have that, then do what you got to do. Exactly. Yeah. That's very dangerous. It, it is, is really dangerous. Is. Yeah. I just think about how many people are like, if I could rewind time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and do this all over mm -hmm. again, I would do it so differently. I didn't mean to cut you off. Were you going to no, say something? No, you're good. I was going to say, just adding to what, what you know, Chris was talking about, and just as also Anna talked about, when it comes to the needs thing, I think another danger is assuming that they know what our needs are. Hmm. And so it's just thinking, yeah. you know, we've been together. If I think about, okay, my wife and I, we've been together for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Surely she knows what my needs are. Uh -huh. But that's not the case <laughs> because, you know, you think about it, it's not fair. They can't read our minds. Right. They don't know what, you know, they don't know what, what our needs are. They don't know maybe everything that we're thinking about, everything we're going through emotionally, they don't mm -hmm. know. You're mm -hmm. two people in a relationship, you throw kids into the mix, oh, yeah. things get spread thin, right. work. Mm -hmm. um, well, and things change. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's different seasons bring different things. And mm -hmm. so if you're not willing to have that conversation mm -hmm. to say, hey, this is something that I just, I feel like I just need more of right now. Mm -hmm. and, and for this season, I just need more of this. But if you never say that, then you know you can't hold your you can't hold your spouse responsible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I hear you saying is it's an ongoing conversation. Definitely. Yeah. You know, every day yes. is a new day for marriage, mm -hmm. and so to continually have the conversation of what needs are at that time, it's very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just thinking about. Um, it really is an ongoing conversation, and when you're in different seasons, I mean, we certainly know research tells us that especially for men, after the birth of a child, when there's so much focus on the baby mm -hmm. and the mother-baby relationship, men feel kind of put the back seat mm -hmm. or just a bit of rejection. And that, like if you don't know it, if you don't know that that's a time when you are most vulnerable for cheating or an affair, mm -hmm. you could fall right into it and, and it be very innocent just because you feel like, okay, at home, mm -hmm. it's all yeah. about the baby. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no conversation about my needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's something about that though. The, the more, I mean, I'm thinking back to when um, our first daughter was born. And you know, I, I think I had that just for a, a small bit, but, but Kristen and I, for whatever reason, we, we knew <laughs> better than to not talk about that mm -hmm. and to, um, make sure we focused on each other. And I think the more you do that, there's, there's some kind of effect that has it, that the stronger and better you get at that yeah. as time goes on. Mm -hmm. So one mm -hmm. season sort of, I guess it makes you even, even stronger and, and maybe smarter, yeah. I don't know, for mm -hmm. the next season to come mm -hmm. along mm -hmm. and focus on whatever needs are presented at the time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes me think about the temptation when things are hard 
is to back off, when in reality, if in a healthy way, you can actually take a step forward and mm -hmm. try to seek to walk yep. through it mm -hmm. versus away from it, you can come out on the other side yeah. a lot stronger and better off, much healthier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard a really good illustration with that, that when you're in the ocean and the waves are coming against you, people usually run from the waves, and that's when they get you. You know, you yeah. see those videos all the time mm -hmm. when you're oh, smacking yeah. people in uh, the yeah. back. But then you see the surfers out there who are diving <laughs> straight into the waves mm -hmm. and come out on the other side to get farther out. I think that's a great illustration for what yeah. you're talking about. And that's a great way to wrap up our discussion. This has been really rich, lots of good things that we've talked about. And I think it's a, a great episode for you to watch more than once. Grab your spouse, sit down, watch it, and then have a conversation about how do you create safety in your own relationship? What what are the boundaries that you want to put in place so that everybody's really clear about what the expectations are and how you can actually move forward? We, we were talking about running from. The goal would be to embrace whatever it is you're dealing with, walk forward, talk about it, and be healthy and whole. That's a powerful place to be. So. Take some time, watch the episode, have a discussion, and cheers. Hey, 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 if there's topics you want to see us cover on Julie B. TV, the Relatable Table Sessions, email me at julie at juliebtv.com. And if you want to stay in the know about all the conversations that happen on the Relatable Table, literally yeah. on the table, you better subscribe <laughs> to Julie B. TV on YouTube. This table is very relatable. Uh, relatable. <laughs> Legit conversation. Relatable. Right right. Subscribe. <laughs> Boom.